get ready. Get ready. Get ready to go to jail. You going? I called 311 six months ago when I was traumatized with this story. I called 311 to ask them a question about sexual violence, rape, incest. I asked them a question. They didn't answer my question. They dialed 911 without my permission. 911 is on the phone. I asked them a question. The same question that I had for the 311 caller about that basement break. The 911 caller said, Ma'am, do you need me to send the car there right now? We will send the police officer to you right now. And I was like, police officer? I'm not emotionally ready to speak to the police officer. They didn't understand that I just tried to report 17 different crimes to the police. And you think I'm gonna tell the police that I was raped when I was 15? Huh? And that's the reason for all of this activism? And that they're gonna really fucking care? My old goddamn father didn't care. I'm not crying, this is water. My own father didn't care, the one who created this whole situation. Who's gonna care? My sister died and for the first time in my goddamn life, I felt like I needed that nigga. I never needed that nigga. I thought he would do something. He's so conscious, right? You're so conscious. I told you what happened to her. What did you do? You told me you don't want them to think you're crazy. That's what you told me. You don't want them to think that you're crazy like me. Like they said that I was crazy. I only came to see you because my sister said. When I told her I wasn't an activist. The last conversation we had, it was three hours long. I was fucked up by what was happening to me. Because I couldn't understand. I had a moment. I had an activist moment. I told her I wasn't an activist. And that if they're watching long enough, they know. They know. She told me you are. She said, you don't have to be out there protesting every day, every week with a bullhorn that don't make you an activist. What you're doing makes you an activist. She said, that's why you're under attack like this. Act like you're dead and ready to survive. And I didn't know how to take that. She said, listen to me. Fuck them bitches. They don't care about you. Erratic. How the fuck they know you erratic? How they could think you erratic? They don't even know you and your normal self to be able to make a comment like that. Don't sweat that. She said, you know what? They think your father crazy because he knows all the stuff that you know. That's why they called him crazy. And when they killed her and I understood what happened, I needed my father when I seen his page. It was identical to what I was doing. It was the same thing. He never taught me. Nothing. He taught me to hate these people. It's a lie. Racism is a lie. The white man this, the white man that, the white man not the white man. It's my father. It's not my other, he's, he's not white, he's black. Cut his dreads off, still looks stupid. I told him I was raped. I didn't speak to him in 20 years. What do you think the conversation is going to be about? It's going to be about that rumor that you spread about me. I was never a prostitute, man. And when I was in prison, I met a lot of prostitutes that got sexually violated because they were a prostitute. That wasn't right. 
They're selling it to you. You ain't got to take it. I'm not trying to be funny. They still have the right to say fucking no. I still had the right to say no. I was mentally and emotionally abused by my father before this took place. There will be penalties. I'm healing, man. I'm healing. Don't look at this. What you looking at? I'm healing. This is how I heal. To cleanse my soul from all of this that was done to me. But just to have these criminals tell me that I'm criminal. Pack your shit. It's about to get lonely, motherfuckers. It's about to get lonely.